Advanced Google Forms and Docs Using Add-ons, Session 2, Add-ons for Docs, Part 2. Text Help Study Skills is a Google add-on that has highlighting tools. Now, there is a full version of Text Help that is beyond the study skills, but that is a paid for version and it has lots of other features in terms of annotating and word recognition, but we are focusing on the Google add-ons that are free. So you're going to look for text help study skills specifically. You can select, highlight, and group content together, which is really, really cool. It helps students identify and group key facts together because if they can select the important facts, like I said, text help study skills will bring all those facts together as like a summary. Students can use it to indicate new words that they don't understand, highlight key points, and assess them with studying, just like highlighting does. So it's a built-in highlighter. Let's take a look at the tutorial. Today we're going to look at an add-on called Text Help with Study Skills. So if we go to the add-on gallery and we type in text help study skills, um, it's a highlighting tool that we're going to use. And then accept the permissions that you get here. And in order to show you how this works, I have just um, copied some information off the internet on Abraham Lincoln. So let's say I need to write a paper about Abraham Lincoln, and I'm taking notes. I'm going to use this text help study skills. Um, so if I go to the study skills, I'm going to say show highlighting tools. And I'm going to get these highlighters that pop up over on the right. And what this is going to do is I'm going to highlight this reading to take notes and then when I'm done I'm going to collect these highlights and it's going to put all of my highlighted information in one document where it gets rid of everything I didn't highlight. So it'll be a really nice nice notes page. You can see I have four different color highlighters that I can use so I could um, highlight in one color or if I want to categorize my notes um, I could use different colors. So let's say I'm going to highlight facts in yellow. So I could say that Abraham Lincoln led during the Civil War and highlight that yellow because it's a fact. Um, let's say I'm going to use another color to show me things that um, show more about his character. Um, so I might say that highlight Lincoln believed he proved the world that democracy was a lasting form of government. I might make that blue. Um, I might say that Lincoln is a Republican and that's a fact. So I highlight it yellow. I can see that Lincoln was the first U.S. president to be assassinated. That's a fact. Um, maybe I see that the Lincolns were poor. Maybe I think that tells me about his character, so I highlighted in blue. So when I'm done highlighting my reading, I click on Collect Highlights. And what it's doing, is first it's going to ask us, do we want our highlights to be in order that they appear in the document, or do we want them to be sorted by color? I'm going to pick color. And now it's making a whole new document with just the things that I highlighted, which gets rid of all the other stuff. So I can see I have all my facts here in yellow and all the things that show me about his character in blue. And so this would be a great place um, to collect notes um, to use to write my paper. Um, it did make it in a new document called Collected Highlights, so you might want to change the name or add something to it, or otherwise you'll end up with many documents in Google Drive that say collected highlights and you won't know what any of them are. Um, and the other document that you first started on um, is still there. Um, if we come back to that, we close that, we can see, so here's the original page we started with. So it's really nice um, because it takes it all and puts it into one document and gets rid of all the stuff we don't need. Um, one more thing I wanted to show you quick um, underneath all the highlighters, you'll see that there's this link for hips and hints and tips for classroom use. Um, if you click on that, they give you some ideas of how to use it to find main ideas and details, um, difficult words, parts of sentences, and gives you some ideas maybe of how you want to use it with students. 
So I just wanted to make sure that you noticed that that link is there. The next add-on is called Kaizena Mini. Kaizena Mini is great for feedback in Google Docs. You highlight and speak instead of typing. So you're, it is actually not written feedback. It's really, really cool. It tracks the skills of your students. So the students know what to improve. You can avoid repeating yourself with click links to any online resources. And it's 100% compatible with Google Classroom. If you were familiar with Kaizena, Kaizena Mini is just the version for using right in Google Docs. Let's take a look at the Kaizena Mini tutorial. The gentleman is already installed Kaizena and is in a doc that he is using for feedback. And once that opens up, I'm going to put myself in the position of teacher. And what I'll do is I'll go to add-ons, Kaizena Mini. I'm going to open the Kaizena Mini. And we should see it appear in the right panel of the screen. And for this document, I have two choices. Either I am giving feedback or I am receiving feedback. In this case, I'm playing the role of the teacher, so I'm giving feedback. And then it asks who's receiving the feedback. Make sure you pick the right uh, email address here. This is important because a notification will be sent to this person, letting them know that feedback has been left for them on this document. Click Continue. And now I am going to read through the document and give feedback where I feel it's necessary. So. We're going to pretend that in this scenario, uh, one of the things that we're looking at is the hook or the, the introductory sentence that grabs the reader's attention. And in this case, the hook, she's dead, said the coroner through a mouthful of Doritos. I know that much. We're going to give some, uh, some feedback to the student about this. So I highlight the sentence, I click new feedback. I'm going to tag this simply calling it hook. And this would usually correlate to a rubric um, that you might be using to grade an assignment. So we're going to pretend that hook is part of that rubric and it's graded on a scale of 1 to 4. So I'm going to say that um, I, I really like this. It interests me and it makes me want to read more. So I'm going to give this a 4. And I'm going to leave a verbal comment here on this hook. Click on the microphone. Start recording. I really like your, your hook in this document. It makes me want to read more. I feel like I already know something about the coroner based on the fact that he's talking through a mouthful of Doritos. Somebody's died and I'm ready to know more. Excellent job. And we can see that after we record that, it processes the, um, the recording and and then it captures the, your voice so that when the student goes back to review the document, they can hear your comments. So I read on a little bit further. Yeah, well, nothing escapes you, does it, Harry? Detective Brettstone shook his head and fought back tears as he gazed upon the body of the 23-year-old soccer star that should have been making her Olympic debut four hours from now under the bright lights of the new soccer stadium in Boston, Massachusetts. This one was going to turn into a real mess real soon. Okay, what I see here is the second sentence. It's quite a long sentence, and it kind of gives me a feel of a run-on sentence. Um, that doesn't take long to, to explain. So rather than make a voice recording, I'm just going to leave a comment on this one. And I'm going to say, run-on sentence. And I know that the student will recognize what I'm saying. It doesn't require a whole lot of explanation. And that's it. When I close out this document, an email will be sent to the student, and then I'll show you what it looks like when they open it up on their side. Okay, so I'm logged in now to the student's account, 
And what I see here is an email that's been sent to me by the Kaizena Mini um, Google add-on. It lets me know that there is a uh, paper that's waiting with comments and feedbacks from my teacher. So um, what I want to do is open this link in order to see that paper. And it also gives me some helpful information telling me that um, I can find my Kaizena Mini uh, Google Docs add-on by going to add-ons, Kaizena Mini, open Kaizena Mini, and I can review the document. Now, one thing to note here is that the student will need to have Kaizena Mini installed as their Google Docs add-on in order to um, both see and respond to the comments you make. So I open my paper and I see that I'm going to need to open the Kaizena Mini from add-ons. So I go to add-ons, Kaizena Mini, open Kaizena Mini. It's working and I should see the pane on the right side. Okay, and I can see here that um, I've got a uh, rubric item, which is hook. I'm going to click there. And it lets me know that there's a voice memo waiting for me. She's dead, said the corner through a mouthful of Doritos. I know that much. Let's see what I, I had to say about that. I really like your, your hook in this document. It makes me want to read more. I feel like I already know something about the corner based on the fact that he's talking through a mouthful of Doritos. Somebody's died, and I'm ready to know more. Excellent job. Okay, so the recording is very clear. It was 17 seconds long. It took uh, very little time to record and then to process. Now the the student has some, some good feedback to work off of. Also a note here, a text notice saying there's a run-on sentence, which that's something that uh, the student can now fix. Um, these are here for forever until the student decides to delete them. So what that means is that they can come back and they can listen to this again and again, and they can listen to your words over and over if need be so that there's clarity. And what I really like about Kaizena as a feedback tool is the fact that um, teachers are much more likely to leave good verbal feedback and they're going to leave more information for a student if it's quicker and easier to do that. And that's not something that we often see with the traditional red pen method or even um, regular Google Docs commenting. Uh, these voice comments can be very useful for both teachers and students. And as a student, I can continue the dialogue. I can click on something like this run-on sentence. Give some new feedback. Start a recording. Yes, um, Mr. Solomarsh, I agree. It is kind of a run-on sentence, but in this case, I think it works. Now the student has left a message for the teacher, and I'm going to show you one last thing. I'm going to go back in again as the teacher. Okay, so now I'm the teacher again, and I have submitted feedback to my student. He saw my feedback, and he decided to leave a note for me. And so now I can see that there's a, a little pink marker here on my screen that lets me know that somebody else has left feedback. It's not me. It's now the student. And there's a box here, Detective Brett Stone, that relates to that run-on sentence. I'm going to click here, listen to the message. Yes, um, Mr. Solomarsh, I agree. It is kind of a run-on sentence, but in this case, I think it works. Yes, I can respond to this if I want to. I can wait and discuss in a class, or I can just let it go, understand from the student that the sentence is going to stay for now. Um, Kaizena Mini is a free Google Docs add-on. I hope you can see why I think Kaizena Mini is a great Google Doc add-on. But there's a couple things to know about Kaizena Mini. It is in beta release, which means it is like a practice release. It is not fully worked out with all its bugs. It only works in Google Chrome. So they plan on having it for Firefox, 
but there are no plans for it to work in Safari or Internet Explorer, so you must use it in Google Chrome. If you're using it with students on Chromebooks, it's not a problem because that's Google Chrome. But if you're on a desktop or laptop, make sure you have Google Chrome installed. It does not work on any kind of tablet, Kazina Mini. So don't try to use it on an iPad, don't try to use it on a, a Galaxy, any kind of Android tablet, even if you're in Chrome. So you can use the full version on a website. So you can't use Kazina Mini, but you could open up the website on a tablet and use it from that, but Kazina Mini will not work on a tablet. If you are familiar with the full version, if you've used Kazina, the mini version does not say feedback to tag for reuse. So in the full version, you can tag things and feedbacks and then bring them up again and use them over and over again. It does not do this and it does not give you a tag summary. So there are some limitations, but as you can see from the tutorial, it can be a really powerful feedback tool. Speech recognition Google add-on allows you to use speech recognition to write in your Google Docs documents. So that means you will be able to talk into a microphone and it will translate your voice to text. It only works in the Chrome browser, so you cannot use this in Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, or any other browser. So make sure you have Chrome installed on the device. Once again, if you're using a Chromebook, Chrome is the browser on a Chromebook. But if you're using a laptop or a desktop, make sure you have Chrome browser. You go up to add-ons. Find that speech recognition add-on and click on Start. That opens a pane on the right side. And then I'm going to click on Start. And now when I start talking, it will do its best to understand what, that, what I am saying. I could read a paragraph. I could simply talk like I am now and enter my text for my document. When I'm finished, I'm just going to click on Stop. And let's see how good it got, it, how good it did. And then they would have, students will have to go back and That's the only thing I can find. Um, I'm going to start again and do a reading from a book. Tutorial is available on your links for session two. I edited it a little bit and just want to show you. The person read an entire paragraph from a book. She said the word period and it put a period there. So you have to say period. So if you're familiar with text to a voice to text on your phone, it's the same thing, period. Now sometimes it'll put a period and sometimes it'll put the word period. So it's not a perfect tool. There's really no speech recognition tool that is perfect. So you can't just say, okay kids, go ahead and read or talk into it. They still have to go back and edit and make sure periods are periods and not the word period to make sure capitals happened. So there is proofreading required along with speech recognition. MindMeister is an easy to use tool that turns any bulleted point list into a mind map and inserts it automatically into your Google document. The MindMaster add-on takes the first point of your list and that becomes the root topic of the mind map, while the rest of the first level points are turned into first level topics. Second level points are turned into the equivalent of second level topics and so on. It is a great way to help students visualize lists and quickly add a graphical overview to your documents. Let's check out the tutorial. Which allows you to quickly turn your bullet point lists into mind maps 
and insert them into your document. To get started, I open Google Docs in my web browser and click on Create, and then Document here in the sidebar on the left. Now, I can start writing my list. I'm going to make a short to-do list for a marketing project I'm working on and start off with the basics like schedule, finances, roadmap, and content. Once I'm finished, I simply select the entire list and then open the menu item add-ons. Here, I can choose MindMeister and click on the option Insert as Mind Map. Now my map is being generated, and after a few moments, it automatically appears right underneath my bullet point list. I'm going to go ahead and remove the list now since I don't need it in addition to the map. So this is how you quickly turn a bullet point list from a Google document into a mind map. It's a great way to visualize lists and add a graphical overview to your documents. Thank easy Accents is an easy way to insert accents for different languages into a Google Doc. And they will appear in the sidebar of a Google Doc. Let's take a look at the tutorial. For letters and words in Google Docs, you can use the add-on called Easy Accents. After you've installed it, simply click on Easy Accents and highlight Start. A pane will appear in your right side column. Simply select a language, and I know there aren't every language that exists, but there are a lot of them, and they will keep adding languages. I just can't tell you when. So you can pick an accent, just say Spanish, and it will show you the various accents. And you can do one of two things. You can click your cursor where you need the accented letter. And where you click, it simply shows up. You could also highlight if you needed to replace something. Just say I wanted to replace this A in charts. Click on the A with the accent, and it changes that A. So two different ways. Either clicking and putting The letter in or highlighting the letter that already exists and clicking and it adds the accents. Simple, easy. If you are familiar with Google Docs, you might be aware that there is a template gallery. And it's not all so easy to access your template gallery just from a doc. And so there's now an add on that makes a nice little shortcut. The joy of the template gallery is there's a large gallery of professionally designed templates on all different types of items. What it will do is it will automatically make a copy of the template to your Google Drive. So if you're looking for a calendar or a schedule or a resume or a budgeting tool, you'll find it there. You can get access to templates that are not available in the public gallery, which is another bonus. And there are templates for both docs and sheets, but I'm just including this in the doc side. There are no templates for forms. And if you want to find a template, you can search by keyword if you know what you're looking for. So if we go to add-ons oh, and go to template gallery, we can browse and it's going to open um, a menu here to show us all the different templates that we can find um, in this gallery. Um, so for example, we have letters and resumes, and we'll notice there's 20 different kinds of resumes and letters, and they're all templated. So they all have a certain structure to them, and you can just replace the text with what you need. Um, we have business type um, category with invoices and timesheets and payroll, different kinds of attendance, we have a student teacher category from everything from lesson plans to calculators um, to calendars. Um, over here we have calendars and schedules. We have personal finance stuff, home and family, exercise charts, anything you can, almost anything you can think of. So when you pick a template, um, let's say that I want to look at this lesson plan. Um, it's just going to ask me to copy it to Google Drive. And so it's just going to make a copy of that there, and it'll give me a chance to open it right from here. 
And then we'll notice when we open it, it the name of it is Copy of Weekly Lesson Plan. I would change your title, or you're going to have lots of copy of, copy of, copy of in your Google Drive account. So I can change the name, and it's all set up for me. I, all I have to do um, is type stuff in. Um, you know, I can change the date every week. I can make a new copy um, for every week. And you can see that that auto-changed all the dates for me. And so that template will kind of take all the hard work out of, out of things and help you be more efficient. Um, students do have access to the add-ons. So these are all things that they could use as well. Um, if you had a resume assignment, they could come and look at all the varieties and, and decide which one best fits them. Or if you're doing um, some accounting or personal finance, you could use them. And so students can add these add-ons as well. Now on to your assignment for session two. Remember, all the tutorials that you viewed in this presentation are available on the links for session two document, and I recommend you review them. Create a document that shows the use of the following add-ons. Text Help Study Skills, MindMeister, and EasyBib. So that's one document. Two, you're going to create a doc and use Kazina Mini to provide feedback. Three, you're going to create a lesson plan or professional development opportunity that would include students or participants using the following speech recognition, the template gallery, lucid charts, and tag cloud generator. Make sure you share all your docs with me and copy and paste the links to the docs where you turn in assignment two in Edmodo. So essentially, you're going to be utilizing multiples of these add-ons and a total of three separate documents that you will be sharing me with me. Your lesson plan needs to be a complete lesson plan explaining to me how you would use the various features and Google add-ons in a lesson. It can be for more than one lesson, it can be for an individual lesson, you do not have to make me examples of what you're requiring the participants to do, but a full explanation including what your objectives are and how you would use the different add-ons.